guys, I got a couple good questions recently on a video. And instead of answering them, I really wanted to just do a video and just kind of go over things. They were great questions, especially for, for newer hams that don't understand the whole premise of HF radio, the, the wave propagation, what's going on with a radio wave, and the whole premise of skip and, and basically long distance DX with skip on the HF bands. You know, the first question was, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out on 10 meters and I'm, I'm making some amazing contacts thousands of miles away and getting great reports, like five, seven reports. Yet I did hear a guy and I tried to make contact with him. It was a POTA guy about 35 miles away. And he said he could barely hear me, gave me a 3-1 and, and we had a lot of problems. Another question was, you know, I'm making great contacts across the ocean over to Europe from the United States and I'm getting really good signal reports. I can also hear that they're talking to people near me, but I can't hear those people. There are other American, like, four zone calls, just like I am, and I can't hear them, but I can hear and make great contacts with the DX contact far away. What's going on there? Well, let me explain what's going on there. It's really simple. Uh, to start with, take a look at this diagram right here. As you see, the RF signal, the HF signal, is going up, hitting the ionosphere and coming down. That's skip. I'm pretty much, we all know what skip is. But in between that, there's some factors. There's ground waves, which are going, the curvature of the shape of the Earth, and that's going to give you just a little bit of distance. Not much in the HF world. The lower you go in frequencies, ground waves make a bigger difference. Like if you go, if you're listening to broadcast AM radio on your ra local radio station, you're listening to a ground wave. But at night, when you're hearing the distant signals on AM radio, you're also you're hearing skip that's going up to the ionosphere and coming down. And there's some factors that we'll get into that later. But also on the other side of that DX, I I'm sorry, that skip as you have the ground wave, there's an area there, if you look, it's called the skip zone. And it's pretty much just a dead zone that um, it's in between. There's no signal reaching it. So the first question was, why am I getting a 3-1? A, a well, you were experiencing a ground wave uh, signal, not a skip signal. And you know what? You're, you're, you were probably just on the edge of, of fading away and out of the ground wave. The other one is, when you were hearing uh, the D DX stations, but not the stations close to you and next to you, that's simply because uh, they were in your skip zone, you were probably in their skip zone, and you just can't be heard. Your signals were literally skipping over each other. One way around that, and something that the military actually uses this a lot, is near vertical uh, incident skywave, or NVIS, N-V-I-S. And the thing with that is, is a different antenna. A lot of times our DX will use beams, yaggies, verticals, and for somewhat even a dipole. But it, but when you really want to communicate and you want that signal to go straight up and back down, a, a, a different type of NVIS or NVIS type antenna is needed, which could be a dipole, a, a lot of times a, an inverted V or something. Basically, what you're trying to do is change the angle. The takeoff angle of an antenna means a lot to a skip and what's into DX. Um, antennas with a, a higher takeoff angle are going to be more characteristics of NVIS type, which will go up and come back down. And you're going to get shorter skip out of that. Even though it, it is still skip, you could almost literally skip straight up and straight down with an NVIS signal. Whereas something with a lower uh, takeoff angle, like, and that's why I personally, when I'm like out on the beach or whatever, like using vertical antennas, lower takeoff angles are more prominent and better for DX because that lower takeoff angle is going to give you a low angle of skip out to the ionosphere and then back down. So that's really a, a factor in, in skip itself. A lot of things go on with skip. I mean, a real quick uh, uh, refresher on it. Most people know this, but during the day, there's uh, four layers of the ionosphere, and that is the, the D, the E, F1 and F2. And a lot of times what's going on in daytime and, and the, the higher bands are more for the daytime is because the higher bands in the daytime will penetrate through the D and the E layer and then skip off the F layer. And uh, occasionally, though, you'll have if the if the E layer is charged and, and kind of uh, really ionized in pockets or parts of it, you can get what's called sporadic E on HF. This is kind of real common up in VHF, but also in HF. And with sporadic E, basically it's the same as the skip for the F layer. You're just skipping off 
of the uh, the E layer. Typically with sporadic E, you're just going to do a one hop skip and that's it. You're not going to go, whereas you could on the uh, F, F layer, bigger skips, you can skip up, down, up, down and around the world with it. But um, So that's just a quick rundown of, of skip itself on HF. Another really, um, really cool thing that happens in HF is long path communications. You know, a lot of times you're, you, you can, you know, you're got a signal. It's a short path straight on the, what we'll just call the, the great circle straight at that person is a short path. Sometimes it's better if that's like overland through metropolitan areas, time of day, a lot of factors. Sometimes it's better to go back the other way and go all the way around the world the other way. It's called long path. One common factor to long path, not always, but it's mostly done through chordal hop. And people ask, what's chordal hop? Well, chordal hop is when, because you're going, your path now is going through darkness and the night, that the atmosphere is not as charged as much. And when those signals hit the, uh, the say, the F layer through that part of the, the, the world, the F layer is not charged enough to send it back down on an angle to skip around like it does in this in the daylight part and it basically stays and skips at a at a a different angle around the back of the of the earth the dark part back into the daylight basically think of a basketball going you know rimming off the rim and then going back in that's kind of what happens with a uh with, with long path and chordal hop communications there's so much to hf communications and and skip and, uh, and I encourage you to get out and, and really do some research. This is my favorite part of the ham radio hobby is, is HF propagation. I love experimenting with it, experimenting with antennas and getting out and doing some things that, um, that really, uh, you know, are, are, are interesting to me. And, 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 uh, and to me, I find just pure magic, even though it is science and, and physics. I, I, I love it. I, I really do. Got a few notes here. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I, uh, Sometimes I, I, I make these these videos and then I go back and watch them and I go, man, I meant to say this, I meant to say that. So I'm just going to flip through my notes here a little bit, though. But I did say pretty much what I wanted to. I do want to talk about some other types of uh, propagation, radio propagation, that um, that's pretty common that uh, that you can, I, I encourage you to do a little bit more research on. A lot, do some more on sporadic E. Sporadic e is awesome and it's kind of more involved in the higher end of... Um, the HF band is more prominent. And then there's other things like uh, tropospheric, tropospheric ducting. I'm sorry. A meteor scatter. That is exactly what it sounds like, kind of. You're not bouncing your signal off of meteor. The meteor scatter is when a meteor goes through the atmosphere and leaves a trail behind it. So what it's doing is, is charging the, the uh, ionosphere, I should say. And uh, and then you're, you're reflecting your signals off of that. It's kind of rare. Uh, Aurora is the same thing. There's so much more... Um, to to really investigate with propagation, but I uh, wanted to just do a uh, like I said, just a really quick video on skip itself um, because uh, that was, those were great questions, and I wanted to I thought it'd be easier just to explain them and maybe put a couple uh, of uh, graphics or some things there together, but um, and, and get that going as well. Just remember, uh, ground waves ground waves are more prominent on lower frequencies like VLF and 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 LF are long. Long wave, as they as they call it, um, sky waves are basically everywhere. They're um, they're they're from uh, the beginning of the long waves all the way up to just into uh, VHF, as they call the uh, six meter band, the magic band, because that's kind of where sky waves kind of start uh, fading away as they get up into UHF, uh, VHF, UHF, and uh, and and so on. Uh, it's kind of the more of the tropa scatter and, and those types of effect. One thing about all of uh, every basically type of radio uh waveform is uh is line of sight line of sight is everywhere from from you know if you're right next to someone on hf you're going to definitely operate in line of sight and that goes all the way up through vhf uhf satellite comms and, and what have you anyway I, I hope this helped uh a little bit i know it's kind of simplistic for some of you guys that have been around a while but i think it's something that um we all can learn from it and, and, and like i said i do these videos like this where i just get out here and talk because i'm trying to encourage people 
get out there and learn and, and don't just listen to me um do do some research uh, a couple quick uh things uh when i was doing this i kind of looked up a few websites just to kind of get some verbiage or whatever and uh, a couple good ones to check out is uh, www.hamradioschool.com that was a great site the other one was uh, www.electronics-notes.com i'll put a link to both of those here in the description kind of go to those two and look around there's some really good propagation stuff in there anyway i hope uh, that i not only gave you a good uh understanding of hf radio signals but we also did one more, more important thing right then we just uh debunked the flat earthers <laughs> so anyway yeah radio waves travel around the world around the world anyway uh, that was all for the day hope you enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe until next time i'm walt k4 ogo 73 my friends hope to see you soon